People often say to me, oh, I want a five-axis machine. When you look at the job, it's not a five-axis job. And they'll say, oh, I'm going to future-proof. Five years later, they're producing the same job on the same machine. You're trying to drive five-axis when you don't need five-axis. Fewer the axes, the fewer the problems. Hello and welcome to another MTD podcast. Uh, I'm Paul Jones, the host of today's show and the founder of MTD uh, CNC. Today's podcast is all about the launch of a new machine, the Hecate H65. Now, I'm joined by the Sales and Applications Engineering Director from Starag, uh, Lee Scott, and also Mark Dedman from MTD CNC. Um, firstly, uh, we'll welcome our guest, Lee. How are you? I'm extremely well. Thank you for for asking us to join you today. Now you, it's quite interesting because you've just been doing a live show, haven't you, about this machine? So oh, this yeah. is a little bit more relaxed. There's no pressure on this this being lively, so you you don't have to worry as much as you were an hour or so ago. But it went well. Went extremely well. Thank you. Good, good. And you can actually watch that uh, live feed on our YouTube channel, uh, and in fact on LinkedIn and Facebook where we streamed that this morning. I'm also joined by uh, Mark, who was uh, a part participating in that live. Um, event as well. Mark, are you keeping well? Yeah, very well. Yeah, as you know, our diaries are absolutely packed. So you're flying around the country and, uh, you know, hopefully it won't be long before we're flying uh, to other countries. So, yeah, good news. Well, let's hope so. Let's hope so as restrictions lift. Um, I mean, that's to actually, let's start with actually, Lee, for, for you, because, I mean, Starag, you, you're very successful as a company in a lot of industries, but one of your big ones is aerospace. What's it been like for you in the last 16 months? Well, it's interesting because the military aerospace projects continued and we've been successful in those areas. But of course, the, the, the anticipated rate ramp up of single aisle was decimated overnight. So, um, of course, that, that's had an effect on us all in, in terms of projected new business, in, in terms of just, just top up orders that we would have anticipated last year. So aerospace was a hit, but luckily we, we were involved in other sectors as well which is um, which has kept us buoyant um, and what's the news on the aerospace coming around the corner from from what you're hearing it, it depends on who you speak to I, I think the 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 year that people are talking about the most both in, in the engine and the structures market is 2024 before we start seeing anything like pre-covid recovery rates it's a long so way it's, away. It, it's a long way away yeah but I mean you, you're also quite big into other industries aren't you as well so Although that's obviously had an impact, you, you've probably picked up in other areas, like, like other machine tool companies have, have adapted. For sure. I mean, the, the transport and industrial sector has, has remained buoyant, particularly with, uh, with agriculture and earth moving equipment. And um, the energy sector is, uh, is, is good. That There's a lot of uh, emphasis on zero carbon footprint and renewables. So there's a lot of activity in those markets. And, and of course, the medical industry as well is... is uh, well, it's interesting you say that because when, when you look at... I mean, I've known Starag for coming up 30 years now and obviously how the group has developed with... Uh, obviously, Droop and Rhyme, for instance, and you've got Boomatick. I mean, absolutely two spectrums on uh, different scales. You've got Droop and Ryan, you know, they, well, I think there was one machine that we was actually uh, having an interview on that could hold, uh, you know, up to 350 tonnes with a gantry uh, mill, uh, if, I, if I remember rightly. And then you've got the Boomatech machines, which are very much small parts, medical, uh, watchmaking, fifth, up to 15 axis. Well, up to 39 axes <laughs> well. in total. So we, we can produce watch links in just a few seconds. We produce all the internal watches. You know, we, we make gears in, in, in one setup. So we, we can engrave the head of a pin if you want to talk about small parts. Well, well let, let, sort of enlighten us. For, for those that listen to the podcast and maybe don't watch some of our stuff on YouTube and maybe don't know much about Starag, um, you know, before we get on to the H65, the new Hecate machine, uh, perhaps just give us a quick overview of, of the group and how it works. Well, we're very pigeonholed. So you said earlier aerospace. People that know us in aerospace think of us just in aerospace. But we're a, a broad company. As you said, we, we micro-machine up to 350 tonne, and, and, and these components could be 20 metres long or more. So we, we focus on sectors. Transport and industrial is, is a key sector for us. Aerospace and energy is, is a key sector for us. Precision parts such such as uh, such as watchmaking, me medical, jig boring type applications is another key area for us. And within those sectors, we have a high level of expertise on specific types of components, could be blades or blisks, for example, in, in the aero engine sector. So we try and be the best at something rather than be just a general machine. What company. I what I think is interesting there is you've told us about the app 
the application side and what the machines that you supply create and make. But I'm also interested in these brands of machines. So from that side, what machines are available within the group? Well, first, the applications is where we come from. We deliver solutions to customers. We don't just sell machines. And it's a bit of a cliche, but it really is what we do. So the, the engineering team is bigger than the sales team. Well, that's why your title here is Sales and Applications Direct, Engineering Director, isn't for, it? I for, sh- for sure. We, we, we wanted to bring the two divisions together so that they work very much in parallel. And our sales process is an application solutions process. So for the brands, as you, as you, as you just asked me for there, we actually have 10 brands in, in the group. Starag is the name of the group, and Starag is a brand in its own right. But then we have a number of other brands going through the range of different machines and solutions. And, and they're typically made in, in, in different plants, mostly around Europe. So uh, what are they? Well, you've got Starag, you've got Hecat, you've got Boomatech, you've got SIP, you've got Droop and Ryan, you've got Doris, you've got Speed, you've got, did I say Hecat, you've got TTL. Um, I apologise if I've missed some well, to my I, colleagues. I think there's only one on that list that you, we haven't been to uh, on MTDC and C, which is the Boomatech factory. I think that's uh, you know that's the one that we couldn't get to. But over the years, we've been to Droop and Ryan at Bielefeld, for instance, and uh, obviously Chemnitz. You know, uh, obviously, you know, when you walk around Chemnitz, the size of the machines and the types of machines, but also the the spindle technology that you manufacture there as well. Complete solution. It's a complete solution, and it's all designed and developed in house around specific customers applications when you talk about these factories i can't wait to get back on that plane and go over to these places and start seeing some of this kit being made again it's certainly been starved of that in the uh, in the last um 16 or 18 months but what that hasn't stopped lee is the development of uh, and the installation of of these hecat h65 machines the theme uh, very much of this podcast today so talk us through this hecat h65 machine and and, and why it's been introduced well, first, firstly, the H65 um, and H60, as, as we spoke about this morning, are the seventh and eighth machines launched in the last pit three years from Hecat as, as part of a new range, range of products. And they're, um, they're, they're a very compact machine. So the H65 is about 40% less floor space than its predecessor. The horizontal machining centre. All horizontal, so it's a horizontal four-axis machine center, twin pallet. It's got one and a half ton table load on a six hundred by, sorry, six thirty by five hundred pallet. So it's got very heavy weight capacity. So you can put big fixtures on. You can multi-load the fixtures with lots of different components. What's the maximum size, Lee? What's the maximum size of, 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 the, of the weight of the component? Well, you can put one and a half tons on the table. So you could put one com- one component at one and a half tons, or you, or you could put a large tombstone fixture, for example hydraulic type fixture with, with multiple parts on it so it's all about high productivity so so it's we, we, we have the h60 range which is a hsk 63 spindle which is high speed for aluminium or, or we have a, a, a sort of lower speed 10,000 rev higher power option and then the beast that we spoke of this morning was was the h65 which which is just a workhorse it's just a heavy duty compact machine and, and well, that that, that uh, we did do a live broadcast this morning, and are doing one this afternoon as well. So that is on our uh, YouTube channel if you want to and um, be able to see this machine uh, and some of the, the the animations and the graphics um, that went along with it. But this as a machine, I mean, it's not your first venture into four axis horizontal machining centres. So how does it differ from the others? Lee? Well, well, Hecker's DNA is horizontal machining centres, uh, whether they be four axis or, or five axis, uh, and that fifth axis can be in the trunnion or it can be on the head, as, as you've seen, Mark, with, with the DBF U-axis sliding head. So, you know, t- typical markets would be transport, industrial markets, oil and gas maybe, but also aerospace and other markets as well. Um, and as I said earlier, it's all about productivity. It's all about being able to produce the biggest, fastest, deepest cut effectively and then be able to keep feeding parts up to that spindle. Well, uh, one, one thing that we, you know, your, your colleagues named the event, it was, we used, everybody's saying it's lightning quick. When you say lightning quick, how quick really is it? Well, the, the traverse speeds are, 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 um, are 80 metres. So that, that could be a feed rate or it could be a rapid rate. And, and the, the table rotates at 80, uh, 80 revs, but it's also the, 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 the acceleration and deceleration rates and the jerk factors have got very high settings as well. I don't know the numbers, but 
the positional and the contouring rates are extremely fast. So if you've got the right spindle and you're using the right tool, there's there's, there's nothing in the machine that limits the uh, the process. So time. the only problem you're going to get then is swarf. Well, swarf's not a problem either, Mark, because the machine's like, um, um, the designers won't thank me for this, but the the machine is like a big bathtub, if you can imagine that. The swarf drops into the bottom of the tub and there's a huge conveyor takes it away. So if you look at a lot of competitors' machines, they'll have these small spiral-type swarf conveyors. You're limited to how many chips you can get down down those pipes, if you like, at the end of those spirals. With us, it just drops into the bottom of the machine and it's taken away. So, so you're taking all the heat away as well as all the waste. What about the horror, com- comparing the machine, maybe not necessarily directly to another model, a another brand, but you talk about the speed, the, um, the metal removal speed, I suppose there's things like the tool change time, indexing. Are these all lots of quick little wins that give you a bigger win overall? Is that, is that where we're seeing, we're talking about cycle time reduction here across a variety of of metal types because you've already um, you know said that the different spindles that are available on the machine that was on the, on the live feed this morning is that the case are you saying that this machine compared to some of these others in the market is just faster it's just faster everything has to be faster because if you've got one broken link in the chain then then the whole process is slow so the spindle as, as Robert said on on, on the the web the web thing this morning, uh, the 20,000 rev spindle goes from zero to 20,000 revs in less than a second and decelerates in less than a second. The tool change time is phenomenally fast. We can even handle up to 50 kilo tools in this fast tool changer. The chip to chip time is very fast. The, the contouring rates of the machine are very fast and the pallet change is very fast. So as long as you can feed the machine with parts, whether that be manually or whether it be overhead gantry or, or an FMS pallet type system, then you're going to have a very, very productive machine that makes you lots of money. Okay, but when you start moving things around much quicker, like, you know, when he starts moving around the, the, the football court or the badminton court, as he <laughs> prefers, things start to sometimes go wrong, you know, knee joints go, hip joints and all the rest well, of it. not that old. <laughs> <laughs> but where, where, where are, you know, when you start moving at these really dynamic high jerk rates that you're talking about, is there any weaknesses that can come into play? I mean, not just with the, the, um, the, the structure and the strength of the machine, maintaining tolerances but things like additional tool wear and stuff like that do, do you do these become factors in the manufacturing process and how do you cope with them well they all become factors Paul and, and yet you have to start from the ground up so the foundation is important for a start and, and, and the way that we fix the machine to the foundation is very important we use special materials within the machine base itself and, and the column itself We sit the table on a bridge and we drive the table with two ball screws and we've got direct measuring systems on all axes. And then we, 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 if if you look straight down the machine and straight down the spindle, you notice that the machine's completely thermosymmetrical. So as and when it does change in temperature, it grows uniformly in all directions. It doesn't twist as as you see with with, with, with different options and different designs. So the, the whole thing's been thought about from scratch, discussed with customers. What do you want? What do you want for your business? And we've come up with a very small footprint, but very capable machine. And I think the, the, the great thing uh, with today is that uh, I had the opportunity to uh, speak to one of your first customers in the Netherlands, Stork Turbo Blades. Uh, obviously, they, they are using the machine for turbo blades in, in different sectors, and, and they are absolutely over the moon. But what I find it very uh, interesting is that you get all this information, you make it as quick as you can, and it's still 40% smaller than, the, let's say, the predecessing range. It's pretty impressive, really, isn't it? It's pretty impressive. I mean, we, we've got a number of uh, the, the HEC machines, which, which are still available um, in, in the UK market, and they are beasts. They They eat parts for breakfast, um, whether they be huge titanium structure parts for, for, um, for aerospace or cast iron steel type parts for, for, for other sectors. Um, and this machine will do the same thing. There's no compromise on what, what its capability is, but customers are always looking for more space in the workshops. They're looking to get more machines in. They don't want to build another building. They want to get more, more, more output from 
per, per square meter, if you like, and and that's really what we've uh, what we focused on. Now, just one more question on the actual machine, and then I want to get into some more detail about the application, and also let's talk about something a little bit broader. How um, we're seeing the introduction of 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 what you'd class as real premium machine tools going into more job shop environments, which is I know. A, Part, part of a message that we're trying to um, or Starag are trying to put across here so that will be interesting to find out how and what you're doing on on that front Lee um, but one more thing the boxing uh, do you have like a boxing box construction on your spindle is that the, the type of way your horizontal works as well well the, the, the spindle itself sits in a column it, it's a it's a it's a fabricated column that's FEA designed uh, and the spindle is supported by a hydraulic counterbalance so there's zero weight on the spindle so if you do spindle orbits you usually get a, a deviation as you cross from x to y axis for example we don't get that or we get absolute minimum to you know to the micron so, so what does that do uh, less less wear it's, on the- it's less wear on the machine it means the it means the whole machine itself is is more dynamic so the spindle's floating if you like and it also helps with accuracy so in in, in, all, in all axes we've got an extremely accurate machine here so there's sub micro, sub six micron accuracy um on, on all the range so also being thermosymmetrical as as, as i said earlier means means we're uh, we're tackling the, the the problems associated with heat as well the limited amount of heat that we get because most of it goes down the swarf conveyor so when you when you when you as we do when we challenge our colleagues in in chemnitz uh, the answers that they've come back with on, on these new ranges of machines have been uh, very comprehensive very impressive that they've not left any any stone unturned or cut any costs yet the machines are still so who's right? it for well it's a great question that because if you look at our customer base we're, we're predominantly selling into oems in different sectors or, or say tier one type suppliers and often we sell with a lot of automation and, and we're a, a real systems integrator company not just a machine tool company but this this machine for me is for everybody paul and and i think if um if you're a small subcontractor, I was saying to Mark earlier, we don't get the phone call. You know, you know the companies that get the phone calls. We want a horizontal. We want it on this delivery. We're not going to phone Starag. They'll be too expensive and too long on delivery. That's not the case. So really, um, we only have a very, very small t- sales team compared to others. We really respond to applications. We respond to products and we respond to, to, to customer demands. And, um, you know, if people asked us the question, what would this cost? When's it, you know, can you hit the delivery? And and do you offer all these options? I think the answers are all going to be yes. Now, this is, you know, obviously a a live launch worldwide. That's why we're doing a 10 o'clock for, uh, you know, the UK, so European markets, but also for the US market a little bit later on. Um, When when you look at the market, I'm going to take it from my own personal view of speaking to engineers, and I think Paul may agree with me, is that why not have a five-axis? Where's the argument there from Staragley? Well, you can have a five-axis, Mark. It's just a different machine. Uh, but what we're, what we're launching here is a four-axis. So people often say to me, oh, I want a five-axis machine. When you look at the job, it's not a five-axis job. It's a four-axis job. And they'll say, oh, I'm going to future-proof. And then five years later, they're producing the same job on the same five-axis machine that's broken a few times because you're trying to drive five-axis when you don't need five-axis. So the fewer the axes, the fewer the potential problems. A five-axis machine, typically less rigid than an equivalent four-axis machine because you've got an axis less, of course. And a four-axis machine is a lower investment. So if you can buy a machine for less money, drive it harder then it's going to make you more profit. I, I'm looking at this in a slightly different way, and I'll be interested to see whether you're seeing this, Lee, because as good as the Hecate H65 or these new these new models are, I think there's got to be an appetite and a demand in the market and a, and a change of thinking as to how you're going to make parts. And I think I've seen in the last two years the adoption of this more horizontal machining centre, whether it be twin pallet or either, you know, 10 pallet pool or however, whatever it might be, I've seen engineers begin to install these machines and replace, you know, several vertical machining centres in their machine shops for a few reasons. One of which they want to automate, they want less operator intervention. Um, 
they've had problems with, with, with COVID as everybody has and staff not being able to come to site, the machine, the spindle needs to keep going. Um, secondly, floor space. You know, if you, if you can move three or four machines and do the same work with one, you, you know, that, that can only be a bonus because it means you can get another one of those machines in a, you know, in a later date. They're just some areas. And also when you're making parts on one machine, you know you've not got to move it from one VMC to another VMC to another VMC, damage the part, making accuracies on the component. Everything is done in one environment. So I think the introduction of this machine is quite pertinent in, in, in time. Um, and I can see engineers now, certainly in the, in, the, in the, well, ongoing, looking at different strategies because it's about the machining strategy in order to keep, as the thing you said this morning, Lee, you're only making money when that spindle's cutting. And there is too many machines out there as we speak now that the doors will be open, the guy will be inside it, he'll be lifting a part out, he'll be putting a part back in, he'll be blowing the swarf off. He'll be doing all the things that he thinks are adding value to the making of that part, but they're not. They're just interrupting mm that spindle from going bit of a rant but would you agree <laughs> you, do you feel better for that now <laughs> I, I, I just said you're a bit of a mind reader but um no i, I think yeah i, I think the, the the key for me is these machines are highly productive but they don't have to be for high volume manufacture if you can Look at the UK market. The UK market's full of vertical machines. Look elsewhere in Europe, and machine shops are full of horizontal machines. And when you look at the physics of them, a horizontal machine, it just stacks up. Everything falls away from the tool. It doesn't fall onto the job. It falls down. It's away. It's faster. It's more rigid. It's more productive. But if you can set the process up in the machine shop so that you keep the spindle running. It can be series of one-offs with multiple setups on cubes. It can be one part on the fixture, whatever. Just keep it moving. You, 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 Lee, you say you got uh, um, two pallets uh, and you mentioned uh, in a live broadcast that uh, they're interchangeable, uh, obviously depending on the side. But are these machines, or the H65, uh, automated or automation ready? Yes, they, they are automation ready. When, when you purchase a machine, you need to stipulate whether it's going to be manually loaded or whether you want it to be plugged into a, a, an FMS system or future-proofed for. So you, you may want automatic doors on the machine. Now, some companies have automatic doors because they like to see when the machine's stopped. The doors are open, the machine's <laughs> stopped. They're not looking up at the lights flashing. Um, so th this is part of the conversation process we have with customers when we start looking at a machine and what do they really need and, and what does this option mean to them in, in value. It's not just a cost. The options are there for a reason. If you select the right options, you'll get money back from purchasing them. They're, they're not there just to make the, the, the machine price higher. I, I, I think the cost of the machine, I, and, and I'm not buying one, so I understand people that are going to be shouting at the... Uh, the radio or wh wh wherever they're listening to this at the moment. I don't think the cost of the machine is the thing that people should be p thinking. It's about what what you're going to make from having that spindle continually running and making the parts s securely and accurately. And the one of the things that I've come across quite a lot with, with um, lower technology automation is people have said to me, do you know what? I'm just going to use this machine overnight for roughing because I don't trust it. I don't trust it to machine with intolerance, um, you know, with temperature changes, tool wear and all the rest of it overnight. And I think, well, that's not right in some ways, is it? Because if you buy a machine that you you want to run lights out, you want it to run lights out doing all of the operations not just the, the 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 more simple ones, and I'm assuming here with like a with a Hecat machine with all the things you mentioned, it wouldn't matter whether you're roughing, finishing, boring, drilling, threading, whatever. You could do that anytime, any place. So actually, it's, it's a little bit like your, your your bicycle, then, isn't it? You've got a battery in it. Yes. You say that you have, them, yeah. but you have. <laughs> <laughs> I go faster at night than I do in the day. <laughs> I don't use mine at night at all. I, I would be horrified if any of my customers turn around and said we only rough at night. I really would be because you, you can produce complete components all the time. Um, I would say you need to maintain your machine and, and you know, you need an annual service. We, we also offer a, a service system where you just pay a fixed monthly fee so that there's no hidden costs, if you like. Your service costs are guaranteed. So all you need to do is fill the machine full of parts, keep it running, 
and you know that every shift, every day, every week, every month, you know your complete costs of your, of your machine. And that's how confident we are. And, and that's uh, another thing you've addressed, which I, I, I certainly, uh, you know, speak to engineers, you know, I wish the control panel was bigger. And that's something that you have addressed. And I'm not saying that uh, against any of your machines, but generally a lot of engineers just say, I wish it was a little bit easier to use, a little bit larger. And you've addressed that with this machine, haven't you? Well, yeah, you have. I mean, I, I'm working at home a lot at the moment because of, because of COVID and I've got two screens set up on my desk. I can't work without them now. And um, when I look at these new control systems we, we've put on the machines, the HMI, um, specifically designed for, for, for the user, the screen is a flat screen, it's splittable, so you've got your normal Siemens or FANUC or whatever functions on one side. On the other side, you've got all your setup information, it could be your maintenance information, it could be anything, anything that you want to use yourself on the machine. You can even play games, but we're not supposed to say that. <laughs> you can force information down from, from from management from other systems into the machine or your scheduling and everything else so it really is a, it's a computer in a computer on, on on the machine so you know it's 21st century stuff you um you don't see many companies and i might be sticking my neck out here that buy starag products and go bust you don't see many of these machines going into places and then coming coming out i mean it's uh, and the reason i go down this path is because and you must have a, a calculation a spreadsheet thing or however it works when you talk about return on investment and oee there must be something that um one of these these smaller sme companies could come to you with and say okay well guys you know show me all right let's not talk about exactly how much the machine costs in hundreds of thousands of pounds can you break it down to me as to how how i'm going to see a significant um, increase in 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 business and throughput and ultimately profit by having one of your machines. Are these calculations you can do easily? Well, th this is the conversation we typically have with people. If, if somebody comes and says, "Give us a price for a whatever," we just know we're being used as as a pricing exercise. If somebody says, "Here's a component. We're looking at this component. We think we can win this contract for the next ten years. Can you come and help us? How long is it going to take us? What's this part going to cost? What's the investment going to be? What's the return on investment? What are the maintenance costs through the next five, ten years, etc., cetera, etc.? Cetera? We can really give a good cost per part indicator, and and that's where companies make the profit. Don't buy a machine and take a risk. But but I think it, that's even more important when you've got a multiple variety of parts because. If you can, if you can have a machine, and yeah, now you've got a ten-year contract. That's great. That's dreamland, isn't it? People want that. But that modern industry is is moving more away from that. If you could have, you know, be able to present to someone, look, well, you know, there, there's a there's a fifty off there, and a, a, a three hundred off there, and a six hundred off there, and on that six hundred off, we're going to save you this. On that, there becomes a theme, and people will think, hang on a minute, pretty much every part I put on this machine, I'm going to make faster than I was than I was doing before. You should do it. it. It's very unusual. I know it's application. Well, it's, it, again, it goes back to the applications theme. But somebody might come to us and they'll say, well, we're making these in an hour. It's not unusual for us to say, well, we'll, we'll make them in 15 minutes or half an hour or something. They're, they're not just 5% savings. Often they're very significant savings. But that's more than just selling a machine. That, that's selling a complete engineering solution. And that's the way you hold the part, the way you cut the part, using the right tools, programming the part the right way. And some people get nervous of this. The smaller companies don't like being advised in this way sometimes because they feel like they're not doing the job properly. And that's not the case at all. But that's changing, Lee, isn't it? Because, you know, over the years I've, I've known Starag and, uh, you know, you've taken me around some, some key clients like Boeing up in Sheffield, the AMRC, for instance, you've got machines in there and, and, and other blue chip companies that we, we can't talk about. But I am we are discussing about getting into more general subcontractors because a, a lot of these subcontractors, younger decision makers are coming in or even their clients are pushing them to actually make a change and how many how many times Paul do we actually go into a, an end user these days and they say well I didn't think I could afford one but I could I, I think it, it that that is apparent across a whole myriad of of conversations um, and with respect you know about automation and about efficiency and about uptime and about spindle whether that be starag or and they're, they're, they're talking about trying to get more out of their spindles and i don't think they were so much two and three years ago and i think that's where where you know i think you 
you're right, Mark. I think you will see more of these and will be great for Starag. You'll see more of these machines for a few reasons, not just because of what I'm saying, but because of the quality of the machine entering into the marketplace and people should be mm. looking at them. But I, just, just to add to that, though, Paul, automation doesn't have to be a huge multi-pallet system or overhead gantries. Automation is two pallets. And if you load those two pallets efficiently and you have a guy or a girl loading them properly and maybe running several machines, then you've got automation and it's not cost you anything. Mm. It's off the shelf. Especially if the pallets can take as much weight as you're saying, so you sure. can really present a lot of, as, as Gio would say, present more parts to the spindle on a pallet. That's the <laughs> he likes that the, one, doesn't he? It's, it's a key. USP for Gio, isn't it? But, yeah. but what's quite interesting about the H65 Lee is that it, it, you know, it is designed to actually cut very hard materials and very soft materials because the is it seven uh, different spindle ranges that you can actually offer. There are seven different spindle ranges, and and, and the speed ranges on this particular product from ten thousand up to twenty thousand. So there's different power torque ratios, different spindle sizes, uh, and, and different rates of acceleration and deceleration. So we, we've tried to cover all eventualities without having too many different options available, uh, but all in this same small footprint. Where can people see uh, these machines, Lee? Well, they can come over to Chemnitz anytime. Of course, we've got issues with, with COVID. We don't have a particular machine of this exact model in the UK, but we do have similar other machines that we can take people to in, in, the, in the UK. So there are machines available should people want to see them. Well, say, saying that, you can uh, watch uh, our, our live event uh, again. Obviously, it's pre-recorded. It's on YouTube. It's on the MT, it'd be on the MTDCNC site as well. And, and there's a great video in that where your colleagues in Germany uh, not only ask questions, uh, in, you know, from the audience, but also there's a great video about, you know, why this machine from, from some of your colleagues in Chemnitz. Which I think, uh, with respect to both of you, did a fantastic job on the live show this morning and, and this podcast been uh, great to host as well. People do listen and watch things on different platforms so it's always important to cover all of our bases um lee thank you very much for joining us then good luck with this afternoon stream as well and as mark uh, correctly said you can find the streams that were shot um today on our youtube channel and on linkedin and across all social platforms uh, mark thank you for joining us too um, and that's it for this week's mtd cnc podcast don't forget to join us uh next week for another edition for listening to the MTD podcast. If you found value in this episode, please subscribe and leave a rating and review. Find more episodes on mtdcnc.com.